back to the channel everyone and let's get this straight out of the way my video schedule has been a mess because I haven't had this laptop to the right of me and if you don't remember my earlier videos I was not able to produce a lot of videos very quickly and this laptop is a savior but it also got water damage in the screen left me out to dry for a week was not fun was not fun at all but we are here today it's a late night recording, so I'm not as energetic. It's It's been a long, long day. Uh, worked a double today. Had to go to Austin, uh, uh, which is about about a 40-minute drive for me. And had to get this laptop. And I, I thought we would do a pretty fun video where I can find a way to piss y'all off once again. And you could say this as, as lovingly as possible, but there's a lot of pressure in the NFL nowadays. There's a lot of teams that are feeling the weight, the gravity of their realities as they feel the expectations are growing within their organization. There's The seats are getting warm, and if they do not perform or if they do not exceed the expectations set upon them, firings, trades, uh, big-time moves might be made. And I have three NFL teams. Uh, we've been doing a lot of NBA content. I'm going to be mixing up. You'll see some college football content coming very soon. This was the last hurdle, I believe. I don't got any more trips. I don't have any more plans. It is going to be a lot of content from here on out. But this is going to be a pretty simple video. Um, three NFL teams that I feel that have the most pressure moving into this upcoming season. First one being the Miami Dolphins. <music> Miami had a pretty interesting overall season last year. Now they have moved off of their previous head coach in Brian Flores to now Mike McDaniel from the, I believe it was the 49ers running back coordinator, I believe offensive coordinator right there with Mike Shanahan, which was a interesting move to say the least, just because he is a, I guess it's a, a, the, a lot of reporters have called it quirkiness, a very much youthful kind of like not the traditional head coach that you would get especially when you see him in the press conference he's he gives a lot of analytical nerd vibes which is not necessarily a bad thing i think it's interesting i like when teams will sometimes go a little bit of a zigzag go a little bit left versus everyone going right type of thing where you, you kind of get the unique talent, and I feel like Mike McDaniel is a really interesting guy that I think no matter what happens in Miami, especially with the weapons now, there's a lot more pressure on him. And I think that builds up. And the, the, where, where I get a little bit concerned with this team, and I do feel there's a lot of pressure on a, a quarterback, and you'll you'll notice there's a lot of pressure on quarterbacks on these teams that I'm going to be mentioning. And that that's part of it. I mean, they're the captain. They're the main guy. They're, they're what everyone's going to be talking about in the media those Mondays, those Tuesdays mornings where you have the talk shows and the media will be talking about the quarterbacks and how they played. But the head coaches are well a part of it, especially a first time NFL head coach. And I think it's it's building more and more. The the the, the Tua hype is growing because Tyreek Hill is saying more and more things to the media. You may say that's not mattering, but it's, it's something that we're going to be looking back on. And if, say, Tua does not exceed expectations or uh, builds upon what he's been doing in the NFL, which is not much, they're going to be asking Tyreek to stand on those opinions that Tua is going to be this great quarterback that, uh, not talent-wise, I'm don't. i not going to put Tyreek's quote out of context, but he, he had mentioned that Tua does put the ball in the bread basket more consistently, and I'm not here to talk about that the entire time because there's a lot more things that are under pressure with this organization overall. And I have made a, a couple videos on a couple of these teams so far, and there's one team that I'll talk to that I have not made a full video on yet, which I've been excited to talk about. But not to mention, like, we are kind of assuming that they're going to translate this Brian Flores defense over from the next year. And I do like that they went to an offensive-minded head coach, but I do like what Brian Flores' scheme was, and I did think he got a lot of the best out of those players, especially later into seasons on the runs that they would go on. Their defenses were always super sharp. Xavier Howard, Javon Holland's a borderline top 10 safety out coming out of his rookie year. He's a fantastic player. I do concern about a little bit of their pass rush being more consistent. Christian Wilkins is a very good, not great defensive lineman just yet. And I think, what was it, Emmanuel Agba still is on the team. There, there's some concerns with their linebacking room and i'm not trying to pick and point what like whether this team's going to be good or bad i do feel like this uh, is a team that is potentially a quarterback away from making a deep run in the playoffs i wouldn't say in the super bowl and the, so there's a lot of pressure to perform on the on the head coach uh, specifically with the organization uh, with how they left brian flores 
uh, you have Tua that's under pressure. Uh, Tyreek, without Patrick Mahomes, is on a ton of pressure. I'm sure Jalen Waddle has high expectations coming off of the fantastic rookie season that he has. Miles Gaskin, once again, disappointed last year, and he's going to look to rebound moving on to the next year. And whether or not this offensive line is going to improve, w looking into the future, say Tua does not work out, where this completely implodes in a loaded AFC, what are the next steps? Do they get desperate for a quarterback? I'm looking at Kyler Murray, which I had previously said in a video, but I'm saying like things are going to get drastic because they feel like this is a playoff ready team. And if two is not the guy that's going to get them there, especially if you have Justin Herbert, who is going to be on a potential Super Bowl run, barring injuries and barring drastic things going on with the Chargers, it's just going to make the two a pick look worse. And this ownership has already proven many times that they're going to get desperate and they're going to try to make drastic moves. I mean, they tried to bring in Tom Brady as a part owner, part head coach, part player, part staff owner, part water boy. I would not be surprised if the Dolphins felt this heat and felt this pressure. It might seem cool with Mike McDaniel, but I, I know this team is feeling a lot of pressure and they're talking and they're hyping themselves up. So I feel like they're making this pressure just a bit worse on them. I don't know what to expect with Miami overall, but the other team, I do feel a lot of pressure based off of the moves that they made this offseason. So it's a very similar situation when it comes to the quarterback room. And I'll make this short and sweet is the Philadelphia Eagles. <music> I will say one thing with Philadelphia. It reminds me a little bit of last year with the Miami Dolphins. If I would say they're in a better position. I think they have a way better offensive line, even though it's aging. And I think a lot of people are not realizing that this team is very much close to not having a fantastic offensive line again. But I do have a lot of faith in the Eagles. I think Nick Sirianni had a really good rookie season. B building off of that is going to be huge for him. Obviously, the, the main elephant in the room, the main X factor, just like the Miami Dolphins, Jalen Hurts, can he become a pocket NFL quarterback? He doesn't have to be a guy that stays in the pocket, but I'm saying, can he make the throws when you need him to, or be able to extend plays and make accurate balls and not force the ball into pressure? One of the worst games, I remember making a video about Daniel Jones and Jalen Hurts, then going out and throwing terrible pick after terrible pick after terrible pick against the Giants. I still defended Jalen Hurts. I still think he's a fantastic hard worker. He he is going to prove some people wrong, but if he does it this year, there's a lot of drastic moves that the Eagles are going to make because this is another team that feels like they're going to win now. And then the timelines get a little bit weird if you don't make a big time move for a veteran quarterback. Because say a Kyler Murray gets on the market or Kyler doesn't even make the market at all. He signs an extension with Cardinals. What's the next step for the Eagles? You go get a rookie quarterback. I understand AJ Brown is super young. He's super talented. So is Miles Sanders, who is another guy that's feeling the pressure to bounce back after a kind of a down year last year. AJ Brown asks for all this money. He's going to have to step up and perform. Devontae Smith is going to be going against cornerbacks number two. I'm sure he's going to want to step up after a pretty solid rookie season. And I think the offense is going to be fine. They're going to be very run heavy. That's going to be the main thing. I think that's what's going to be good for a guy like AJ Brown, who's a really, really solid physical specimen. But here's the thing. The reason why I feel like there's, there's heat on this team is this defense is a lot older. Now, obviously, Jordan Davis is a fantastic pick. I love Jordan Davis. Fletcher Cox is not the same guy that he used to be. He's not a top 10 defensive tackle anymore. I do feel that this team overall, Darius Slay is still in the secondary. He's playing fantastic. I, I think that their linebacker room is going to have to improve. Now, I do love the pick from uh, N'Kobe Dean, but here's the thing. There's a reason why a lot of teams skipped on him. N'Kobe Dean is a big time prospect. I understand the medical thing is a concern but it's still a risky pick. It's not guaranteed to boom, but I think it's a really good high upside pick. A lot of pressures on this team to perform, especially in the NFC East. And this is where this is where I why I put them there. If they do not win the NFC East, it's going to be seen as a disappointment just because the Cowboys got worse. The Commanders have Carson Wentz at quarterback and then don't even get started on the Giants. The Giants are not going to compete, but you're this is a layup year. And we always talk about the NFC East as a as a division where it's an ever-changing door, a revolving door, my apologies. And if the Eagles don't win it this year, then especially after surprising a lot of people and making the playoffs, obviously they got smacked by the Bucks. No one was expecting them to win in Tampa. But you're expected to build off of that, and if you go short of that, this is an organization I wouldn't be surprised that made a lot of drastic moves to 
really try to launch them into a contender spot it's going to be seen as a disappointment and they're going to feel the pressure especially jalen hurts a guy that coming into philadelphia was feeling pressure because he had to back up carson wentz and a guy that was seen as an mvp candidate which feels like forever ago now i mean this is a team that's going to feel the heat and nick sirianni is going to have to really improve from the the season before i think he did a really good job i i'm i'm impressed with nick sirianni his press conference scared me at first but i think he did a really damn good job and for the last team that i really do feel that there's some heat on them is the indianapolis colts <laughs> Here's the thing with the Colts. The Colts are in a very interesting position. Obviously, last year, you lose to the Jaguars in the last game. That's what everyone wants to talk about. You get rid of Carson Wentz. You say he's the uh, locker room toxicity. It was all on him. It's all this, right? You had the most Pro Bowlers, and yet you did not make the playoffs. That's something like the Chargers, who went number one on offense, number one on defense, and didn't even make the playoffs. That, that's how embarrassing it is. The Colts understand that, and they made the move for Matt Riney, an adult in the room who's not going to make mistakes, but can honestly win you some games. He still has some talent, even at, I believe, 38 years old. Here's where I get concerned about the Colts. Jonathan Taylor, he's a baller. He's my sleeper MVP candidate. I have three bold predictions for the NFL video coming out very soon. I have MVP candidates, Dark Horse is my favorites, all this, right? And Jonathan Taylor is going to be in a bunch of those videos. I think Jonathan Taylor could exceed expectations. Still a lot of pressure on the guy. And not to mention Matt Ryan is a guy that is a, another veteran coming into the Colts that is going to have to perform. And it's a lot of pressure especially on the head coach uh, a guy that was being looked at potentially to be fired uh frank reich I, I, he is a, a guy i think is a solid enough head coach but at the same time he is not maximizing the talent that's clearly on this team i mean god damn like if you look around you have deforest buckner uh quinn nelson i i still think that you obviously jonathan taylor and michael pittman like I could keep going. There's a lot of good things to like on this team other than their wide receiver room, which I feel like could be improved on. Go get Julio Jones. Don't even, I won't get into that. But like, if you look around at this roster, I like, I would not be surprised if the organization felt very antsy, like anxious if they did not perform. I have them winning, like the, obviously the AFC South. They, that's a guarantee or not really. I mean, obviously you have the Titans. I don't want to say guarantee, but like, they should win the AFC South, especially with the Titans getting significantly worse, especially in the passing game. And there's going to be a lot more pressure on Derrick Henry, who is always getting older. I don't want Derrick Henry to fall off, but if there was a year for him to fall off, it would probably be this year. But I have them winning the number one seed because their schedule is not that difficult. They are not having to struggle in this difficulty with a schedule. Obviously, the Jaguars are going to get a little bit better. I don't think the Texans got that much better, but... The Colts. What is your expectation this year? You make the move for Matt Ryan, right? You have to make at least a deep playoff run. Or it's going to be seen as a failure. And then what is the next move after that? You go get another veteran quarterback? Like, I, I do not know what the next move is. I, I think they end up potentially blowing this up. It feels like this team is almost like the Utah Jazz. Where it's like, what what's next for this team? There's all the pieces. You're, you, you've been seen as this quarterback away. And now you get, I think, the best quarterback in the room that you've had in a long time. But at the same time, Matt Ryan is a very old guy. This is like, this is, it feels very Philip Rivers-esque. I understand Matt Ryan's probably in a better position than Philip Rivers was at the time. But still, what what's next for the Colts if they do not perform at the level that they should, especially in a loaded AFC? It, 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 I, I understand there's, there's got to be a lot of pressure on that team. And so that, that, those are the three teams I feel that have the most pressure going into this NFL season. If you feel like your team or if you feel like these teams should be chilling, they should be leaning back. They should not be worried. They should just go play ball. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you feel like your team has a ton of pressure. Uh, if there's one team that I know shouldn't is the Bears because just make sure Justin Fields doesn't get hurt and try to get that man some help next year when you're out of cap hell. But thank you so much for watching. Videos are back. I'm back. Thank you so much. Leave a comment. Leave a like. I'm on the road to 1,000 subs, and it would mean the world to me if you left a sub. We are at 322. A long way to go, but I still believe in it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.